y'all. Today we are going to be talking about using the online version of Outlook, Microsoft 365. Now I got to tell you, I know what you're going to say because I've said the same thing myself. I love my desktop version. I've been using it forever, but recently I switched over and had to use the online version for a little while and I got to say I've been loving it. So today I'm going to show you 10 reasons why you should be loving the online version too and hopefully I can convince you to come on over. So let's get to it guys. Welcome back to my second vlog series this year with ASAP. I'm so excited that you're joining us today. So if you missed the video last time, we did building a professional development plan and you can find it down below. But this time we're gonna be talking about Microsoft 365, the online version of Outlook. I am so excited about this one because I get asked about this all of the time. So for those of you that are new to me, my name is Melissa Peoples. I am an executive assistant coach and trainer. I'm a certified Microsoft trainer. I'm a productivity coach and I'm the executive operations advisor at the New York Times. I know so many people that have been coming from the Google environment and they open up Outlook and they're using the desktop version and it just feels clunky to them. So today I'm gonna to be showing you 10 reasons why hopefully you'll be loving the online version just as much as I do. It is very robust. Now I will say aesthetics are different. It has some different um, tools and not everything is available, but I promise you that you will be loving it if you're used to Google. And if you just wanna try something fun and interesting, follow along. Oh, and don't forget, if you're interested in coming back and looking at the tips, we'll have the timestamps below, so make sure to check it out. All right, guys, so let's get to the computer and let's get to it. All right, before we get into the nitty gritty, let me show you what the portal looks like. So to get there, all you have to do is you type in portal.office.com. Make sure that you do not put www. It will ask you to sign in. Now for me, I actually prefer to use Microsoft Edge instead of Chrome. Microsoft Edge is optimized for the Microsoft environment and you can log in into different profiles. So this is just my preferred way to do that. So once you've logged in on any browser that you'd like, just go down here and open up Outlook. I've already done that. So I'm gonna click on Outlook for me. All right, so tip number one is utilizing the drag and drop into your to-dos. I love this function, I use it all the time. So let me show you what that looks like. If you, if you look over here on the very top, you'll see my day. This is the same thing if you are on the desktop version as tasks. This is also Microsoft to-dos, it's all the same thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on it. Now it says my day or to-dos, I can see all of these here. So if I have an email that I want to add a task, all I have to do is click on it and drag it over. If you notice, I can either add it as an event or add it as a task. So for this example, I'm gonna add it as a task. And then if I want to change the wording here, I can. I just have to click inside it. And then I'm gonna say review vendor. Now, if you wanted to, highlight this as important, you go ahead and click on the star. If you notice the little mail icon, it just indicates that there is an email that's connected to it. So if I wanted to view the email, I could do that, click on view email, and it will pop open the actual email. So super easy way to manage your tasks. If you open up the manage all tasks, it's very powerful and robust, and there's lots of things there that you can play around with later. Tip number two is pinning my emails. So if you notice, I have four emails here that are pinned. I really like doing this if I'm triaging my inbox and there's something that I want to refer to later or make sure that I get done ASAP. So let's just say that this is an email that's important. I wanna make sure that I don't miss it. So I'm just gonna click on the pin icon and it's gonna move right over here to the top. Super easy. Okay, so now I have five emails that are right here. If I wanna pin on it, it's sitting right there. Really easy to do. All right, so tip number three is snooze an email. If you're coming from the Google environment, this will feel very familiar to you. It's really simple. It's only available in the online version of the Outlook. 
we're going to use the same email. Let's just say that I'm not going to get a chance to look at this until later. So if I want to snooze it, I can just click on the top and I can either choose one of these preset times or I could choose uh, my own date or time. I'm going to choose a date and I'm going to say I want to check this out tomorrow at, I don't know, let's just say 10 a.m. and hit save. So it gets out of my inbox, but it will come back up tomorrow at 10 a.m. For those of you that are managing your executive's inbox and you do this quite often, this is a really great way <laughs> to kind of remind them tomorrow whenever they need it. Tip number four is an email nudge. So let me show you how to do that. What you wanna do is click on settings and then go all the way down to view all Outlook settings. And then from there, scroll all the way down, make sure that you're on mail, and then scroll all the way down to email nudges. So what I love about this is that if you have forgotten to reply to an email, all you have to do is make sure that this is selected and then it will remind you if you have forgotten an email, Outlook will have a little icon that comes up that says, hey, do you wanna to reply to this email? It's been six days or whatever it is. It's a really great tool just to make sure you don't forget about anything. Tip number five is notifications. I love this function. If your company uses the at mention function, whether it be on Teams or um, in documents or in email, you are going to adore this. On the top, all you have to do is click on the notifications and then anytime anyone has either emailed you or put it into a document, it will let you know that you have been mentioned four times. I love this thing. So as an example, I'm gonna open up this bottom one. This is an email that I have been mentioned in. It lets me know that somebody like directly mentioned my name. Let me show you the example of a, um, a document. So I'm gonna click on here and it's actually just gonna open up the document that I was mentioned in. You can see right here that this is where I was mentioned. So really great way to make sure that you're getting people's attention when you need to. Tip number six, customize your actions. I don't know about you, but I use these all the time. Now, how you use your customized actions may be different than how I use mine. So I think it's important to make it work for you. As I always say, make the tool work for you, don't work for the tool. So to do that, click on the settings icon and then view all settings. And then from there, you're gonna be on mail, and then if you look down here where it says customize actions, so these are your options. So right now I have delete, archive, pin, and flag. Now that might not be your go-to. Maybe you do move folder more often. So let's get rid of delete and then let's select move folder. What I want you to notice is right up here, it's going to add the icon to move it to a folder. Or maybe your go-to is mark as read or unread. So you can simply utilize this based on how you are currently working. So for me, I'm going to flag, pin, and move to a folder. These are my favorite go-tos. And now if you notice, I have them all right here. So I have archive, move to a folder, flag, and pin. Tip number seven is show suggestions. So if you notice down here, Outlook has given me three things that I can choose from. So I'm going to say, yes, that would be great. When I click on that, it automatically will send it in an email. So let me show you how to do that. So again, we're going to be in our Outlook settings and then inside of mail, compo compose and reply. And then if you scroll all the way down here, it suggested replies right here. Tip number eight, for all of my OneNote lovers out there, and I know that you're out there, this is a tip that I absolutely love. If you are a OneNote power user and you are using your phone and taking notes, sticky notes specifically on your phone, you can connect it to your feed here in Outlook. So let me show you what that looks like. So if you click on the OneNote feed at the top, it's gonna take a second. Okay, so what this looks like are, these are actual sticky notes that I have made on my phone and it connects it here to Outlook. What I love about this is I have a systematized way 
that I know if I have my phone and I have a thought or I want to take a picture of something and send it, it will go right here. So I know all of you are asking where are all of my other OneNote pages. Um, Outlook hasn't quite got it, so it is updated here, but they are working on it. But for now, you can still access your sticky notes. Okay, so let's just say that in this one, I want to drag and drop this into this email. So I just simply click on it and then I can drag it in here. Now that's a really big picture. I wanna make it a little bit smaller. So this was the note that I wrote inside that sticky note. Now let's say I wanna get rid of this one. And instead I wanna put this one that has bullet points in there. I can do that. So I just simply drag and drop it and it will automatically add that content right into my email. I love this tool. Tip number nine is charms or meeting icons. I love this thing. I don't know about you, but I am on my phone all the time. And it's just a really nice visual reminder when I'm looking at something just to kind of see what the charm is. These mean different things to me, but I use emojis both in my email, but I just like the charms in my calendar. So let me show you how to do that. So you can pretty much open up any event. And if you type in something, let's just say workout. So as you can see, there's all these icons that are right here. Just simply click on it and you can choose any one that you want. So let's just say that I would like to do this one and then you can still invite the attendee for this one. I'm gonna invite Nick and then I'm gonna hit send. So as you can see, I have a workout in the morning and then focus time and then this is a one-on-one -on -one, and then this is an actual meeting. So to me, this is just a really great visual reminder of a quick view of all the things that I have going on for the day. Okay, tip number 10 is adding special calendars to your Outlook automatically. I don't know about you, but for so many years, I was always adding dates for my executive business partner and for myself on school and when they were out and when they had early release. Well, now Microsoft has done it all for you and I wanna show you how. Okay, so what you wanna do is click on add calendar and then you wanna go down here to from a school so my district, I'm gonna say 78628. So as you can see, it's gonna bring up four. I'm gonna bring, um, I don't know, my old, <laughs> I lived in Indiana. So these are just an amazing tool. It's Indianapolis School Districts. Just throw this in or go back to where I was. I'm gonna add 78628. And I'm gonna choose this time Leander ISD. Now from here, it may ask you if you wanna do the district, which is basically not gonna put any of the actual school events. It'll just put you, you know, dates where there's no school or they're out early. Or if you wanna get really detailed and see all the sporting events or all the actual parties, you can just actually click a middle school. So let's just do this one for a middle school and we're gonna check Leander Middle School. All right, another bonus tip that I really use all the time, and technically you can actually do this both on the desktop version and on the online version of Outlook, but it's such a great tool, I use it all the time. So if you hover over anyone's name, so I'm hovering over Nicholas's name. Now for me, I actually have um, LinkedIn connected so that I can go directly to his uh, LinkedIn profile. But if I scroll farther down, not only will I get emails that are invites and emails but farther down i can actually see all of our files that we have shared back and forth so i love this one because really it's so easy if i'm looking for someone generally it's because i'm looking at an email an easy way for you to find your files all right another bonus tip just because we're here and i think it's so powerful is if you are in the top left you can do this whenever you're on the portal and if i click on it I can see all of my apps and I just really love this. I'm gonna go down here under my documents. I can see all my documents. If I wanted to go to SharePoint or to Teams or OneNote or PowerPoint, I can just do it all right here. And it's just a really easy way to make sure that you're being super collaborative while you're on Microsoft 365. So that's it for my bonus tips. Now let's get back to the other stuff, guys. 
So I hope that I have convinced you to like the online version of Microsoft just a little bit more. I know for most of us that are so used to the desktop version, it's definitely different. The aesthetics are different. Um, it doesn't have quick steps and it does not have, well, pretty much it doesn't have quick steps and connection to OneNote. But if you are using, not using those tools already, I would love it if you give it a try and let me know what you think. I'm gonna be doing a few more vlogs in a collab with ASAP, so make sure that you guys take some time and comment below. Let us know what your favorite tips and tricks in both Microsoft and the desktop version are. So hopefully you are willing to step out of your box and give it a try a little bit. And just as a reminder, guys, it doesn't matter which tool that you're using, you just wanna make sure that you're making the tool work for you and you're not working for the tool. So if you guys are looking for more content, please make sure you see me over on my YouTube channel at Admin Gurus. And until then, we'll see you guys soon. Bye, y'all.